How's everyone doing? All right, I got 20 bucks in my hand. Show of hands, how many people want this $20? All right, cool, cool. If I take this $20 and I crumple it up, and I throw it on the ground, stomp it out, who still wants it? Cool, cool. But if I took this $20, kind of got it all up in my business, you know, all up in there, fucking took it on the ground again, really dug it on the ground, who would still want it? Nice. <laughs> You know, this goes to show you, even though I did all whatever I did to the $20, it actually never lost its value. I'm like the $20. I'm a grateful recovering addict that goes by the name of John. So uh, I'm very grateful that, you know, DrupalCon allowed me to come and do this kind of offbeat topic. Um, it's not too often that a recovering addict actually comes to a tech conference and, and gives a, you know, a speech like this, but I think. All right, so uh, I'm John Willett. I'm uh, the sales engineering manager at Tandem. Um, we do a lead Drupal WordPress Laravel, Node.js development. We also make Lando if anybody has used it. If you're not, make sure you're using it now. Um, also, just side tidbits, I'm uh, enamored with uh, celebrity gossip. Any uh, social media drama, people who put their whole family drama on Facebook, I'm like, this is great, you know? I live for that stuff. Um, and any dank memes out there. So, you know, this is, like I mentioned earlier, um, kind, of, kind of different, you know, what do you, you know, how do you give a talk like this at a, at a, you know, a tech conference? And, you know, I'm going to talk a little bit about addiction. I'm going to, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. And, and we're going to talk a lot about, you know, people who are, come from different backgrounds and, and, and don't fit into the, the general mold and, and how you can accept them and, and build up their confidence and, and fun stuff like that. So, you know, there's a lot of controversy right now about addiction. I mean, it's very much in the news. Um, especially with this administration. There's a humongous opioid uh, you know, epidemic happening across this country. I, um, I grew up in New Hampshire, and uh, it's facing like one of the worst heroin and opioid uh, epidemics that this country has ever seen, worse than the crack epidemic, really, really bad. So you know, what, what people understand is I was an addict before I ever took my first drink, before I ever took my first drug. I was born an addict. Um, I, I, I exhibited a lot of addictive behaviors as a young child, um, you know, and nobody really wants to think their four-year-old is an addict. It just doesn't work that way, you know? So um, the, the solution for everybody is just stop using drugs. Well, no shit, you know? <laughs> like, I'd never thought of that before. Thanks, <laughs> you know, I'm cured. Um, the problem is, is the drugs are just a catalyst of, of addiction. Addiction is a mindset and a behavior set that causes you to do things such as drugs or whatever. And addiction is all encompassing. I'm addicted to everything from sex to women to gambling to work to money to power. I want it all. I want all the things. I'm addicted to more. And, and, and many addicts fall under that. Drugs just happen to be the worst case scenario for, for people that suffer from addiction. So what's up with me? All right. So um, you know, uh, when I when I when I talk about this, I try to get the bad stuff out of the way first. You know, I've been to prison. You know, I've I've been shot by my father. He also killed my mother. Killed himself. I've been stabbed. I've been arrested so many times. You know, and like I mentioned earlier, I did a bunch of time. Um, however, prior to all that, um, you know. I grew up like everybody else. I grew up in a nice small town in New Hampshire. My father uh, did very much what we do. He owned a, a consulting firm, computer consulting firm, AS400s and System 32s. And so I grew up around this industry. Before I had a computer, before anybody else did. Um, and uh, you know, I, 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 he was. We were upper middle class. I mean, he came from nothing and and built his life up. And he grew his agency to the size of like a media current or or a very large agency in in Massachusetts. And so, you know, I, I never went without. Um, you know, he, he worked a lot and and he he could he was abusive physically and mentally at times. And you know, as I got older, it was more mental than than physical because he he just couldn't hit me anymore because I I could fight back. You know, but. Um, for the longest time, I just never fit in. You know, I, I felt like um, I was always the odd man out. I, you know, I, I always feel like, you know, when I explain this, like Ricky Bobby in Talladega Nights, when he's giving a speech, he's like, I don't know what to do with my hands, you know? That's how I felt my entire life. Like, something just wasn't right. Um, and, and, 
as you know, as like junior high and high school started to happen and, and drugs and, and other things like that. And when I refer to drugs, I refer to alcohol too because alcohol is a drug. It's the most dangerous drug in the world. Um, so when I started, you know, doing drugs, it was like I finally fit in. I found like, like this common glue that, that I, people accepted me because I could drink more than everybody. I could party harder than everybody. You know, I was the cool kid all of a sudden and, and I felt great. You know, but um, it, it really wasn't great. You know, I, I, I kind of followed the, the path that most people did. You know, I was high school, military, college, grad school. I had, you know, good jobs and stuff, but I was always a hot mess of epic proportions. Um, I, I had really high highs and really, really low lows. Um, and, and until my parents murder suicide, like I, I kind of used that as a catalyst that, that final thing to, to just decimate my life, what was left of it. And, and you know, I didn't get clean till I was 36. Um, and so, you know, like I mentioned before, by the time I was in my 30s, it was, you know, I had some money. And if I would come to a convention like this, you would never see me. I would be out at the bar. I'd be partying with the cool kids, you know, getting really messed up. I'd be, you know, at the late night things and, 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 and whatnot. And, you know, that... What happened over time was, like, all I did was just drink all day, take pills all day, and, and it, that's all I cared about. It just encompassed my entire being uh, for the longest time. And, and pretty much till it got to the point where I ran out of money, and I, I hurt every single person that cared about me, that loved about me, you know. They, I, just, I just destroyed all of that, and, and I ended up homeless, um, you know. Uh, I was, um, you know, a master's educated homeless person, and um, it, it, it's. I remember, I remember when I was an intake in jail, and they asked you like on 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 the thing. I was like, what, "What's your highest level of education?" I was like, "Master's," and like, you know, wow, we don't hear that too often. And I'm just like, just because I'm well educated doesn't mean I don't do stupid things, you know. <laughs> so, um, you know, it, it was it was very humbling and weird because when I was homeless. And I've been homeless twice in my life. I, I had kind of a period prior to that to where I was kind of couch surfer, living out of my car. Um, there was a few relatives who kind of gave me a second chance and, and life kind of happened and I was able to pick up the pieces but I was never really whole again. Um, but the last time I was homeless, I was truly homeless. I had nothing, nobody, nobody wanted anything to do with me. Um, they're like, keep Johnny away from us, he's a hot mess, you know? Um, and all, he, all I do is like steal, you know, cause fights. Um, I, I just, I was very abrasive and, and not fun to be around. So, you know, when I was homeless the last time, I, um, I, I, my whole world centered around trying to get $20 a day. $20 would get me high, get, put a, you know, a dollar burger in my belly, and put a couple bucks gas and a pack of cigarettes. That's pretty much like my whole world. That's all I cared about. So if I had to take it from you, I was gonna take it, you know? Um, and I did some horrible, horrible things during that time that I, for the longest time, um, was afraid that, you know, the feds were gonna knock on my door or um, other things like that, even after I got clean. So I'm, I'm grateful that never happened. But, um, but that's just the wreckage of my past and that, that's part of who I am, you know? Um, you know, along the way, a lot of other things happened. And, you know, I have two children. I was married before. Um, and when I was homeless, I had pretty much chewed up everything I could with my, my, son's, my, my son's mother. And she was the one that suggested I go to a homeless shelter. And, um, you know, I was, I was like, I'm not going to a homeless shelter, you know? Uh, I'm just not going to do it. That stigma kind of was, was like, I'm, I just don't want to do this. And, and finally, I swallowed my pride, and 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 I was, and again, you know, I have a lot of gratitude around that because it was it was the springboard that kind of got me clean, and and catapulted me to where I am now. Um, you know, in that homeless shelter, um, they brought NA meetings in there, and it gave me something to do. You know, there wasn't like a magical moment when I walked into a Narcotics Anonymous meeting and be like, "All right, I'm clean, yay!" It was kind of like. I don't have to go back to the barracks, you know, the homeless shelter, and listen, because part of the time I was detoxing off of, off of what I was using, and, and if uh, detoxing is also another thing I never, ever want to go through again. Um, it was horrible. It took about six, 
six or seven weeks until I was fully detoxed. And, and that time was very painful, uh, auditory. Your, all your senses are messed up. Your, your physical pain, you can't eat, you can't sleep. Uh, it, it's horrible. And I made it through that, but at the same time, I was in this place that was really, really loud, full of chaos. And so the NA kind of gave me a place to go. And, and, and it kind of stuck, you know? I kept going back, and, and I kind of faked it till I made it. And um, that's a kind of a common saying, you know? And I was very grateful. And, um, you know, I met a guy, his name was Steve, and, you know, he kind of gave me, I didn't have any money, and he gave me this, you know, it was my uh, basic text. This is my manual as an addict. You know, you've heard of RTFM as a coder. This is my manual. And uh, unfortunately, though, um, about a month after Steve gave me that, he relapsed and died. Um, and it's a constant uh, reality that I live with. Um, I've known at least 10 people that have gotten clean and died. And I've been clean for almost six years now. Um, and it, it's scary because it is a very real. I mean, he went and had surgery and got prescribed a script and he was dead two days later with a needle in his arm. Uh, and, I, and that's very, you know, I, I recently had all my teeth removed because I'm in the middle of getting all implants in and I hate wearing dentures and I have a lot of fear right now that everybody's judging me because I don't have any teeth in, but I don't care. Um, and I had to take a narcotic. I took one pill and it was, it was you know, I, I talked about with my sponsor and all these people and it was, it was, it was a big deal. <laughs> and, and I made it through it though, okay, you know. Um, but yeah, so, you know, flash forward, um, I was uh, living in a clean house, and, um, you know, I, I, I knew somebody who was in the Drupal community, and they, they were starting a new company, and they, and they uh, posted something on Facebook, and I kind of reached out, and, and they hired me, you know? Um, so I was very fortunate, and uh, <laughs> I kind of lied my way into the door, to be honest, and, and, and was able to kind of fake it until I made it. I mean, I didn't, I, I, I had a computer science degree, but I had, hadn't coded in 10 years. Um, I had uh, no PHP knowledge. I barely knew Drupal, um, and, and they kind of, you know, they, they taught me and kind of showed me, you know, how to do things, and, and there was no Drupal learning curve for me, fortunately. It just kind of made sense, and it kind of took off, so I don't, you know, that's kind of cool, but... Um, you know, long story short is the, the, I know they had to jump through some hoops and took some chances in hiring me because at the time I was out on probation or I was out on bail actually and I was about to be put on probation. Um, I'd only been clean for a few months. I was a convicted felon at the time. You know, um, everything screamed like don't hire this guy and they did. Um, so, you know, here I am, you know, six years later. So, you know, that, that's a little bit about me and how I kind of got to where I was before. Um, so, you know, it kind of gets into the nitty gritty, like someone took a chance on me and, and so it kind of brings us to the point like, you know, what's going on in the world? Um, you know, 10 years ago, someone probably would have never hired me 10, 20, 30 years ago. And, um, you know, this world is changing very, very fast. We live in a very politically charged universe right now more so probably like when my parents were younger in the 60s and, and things are happening and, and there's so much hatred on either side that like I kind of stay off social media now because I'm just like I can't take it. Like it's just so much anger. And you know it, it affects me too because as a recovering addict I see what people think of, of people who are still lost in active addiction. I, I see that on social media like that effing loser. Why can't you take care of your kids? You know, why can't you hold a job? Just stop using drugs, you know, and, and and I made a choice early on in my recovery that I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna be anonymous. I was, gonna, I was gonna go out there and make noise because the only way you can change a social stigma is if, is if you show that the stigma isn't real. Um, and, and so I started to do that and, and I know I've changed people's minds. I still see some of the comments. I can't change other people's you know, behaviors, but at least I can show them that by example that you know, not every addict is, is you know, completely lost and, and they can change. They just need to be shown a certain way. So you know, what's socially acceptable is, 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 has changed so much when I was a kid. I mean, I, I grew up in an all white town and, and you know, there wasn't, you know, uh, things were just you know, much different. And 
you were gay and sexual orientation and you know, all this other stuff just was never talked about. Um, and and that, that's completely different. Like the world is a very different, different place than when I grew up. Um, and so, I mean, you know, if you're not accepting that, then, then you're part of the problem. You're, you're holding the progression of the human race back by, by being inept and, and unable to accept that people come from different backgrounds, different cultures, different realities than that, you know, the, the, than the cookie cutter life you may grew up in. Um, and, and, you know, it's, it's, it's the melting pot that kind of made, you know, this country what it was and, and other places as well. So, you know, on the, on the plane right here, I actually watched this thing um, and I kind of forgot about the guy's name because I'm a little nervous, but um, he's a billionaire they worked for, he owns like this giant hedge fund and he started this thing in China to uh, kind of put all these like kids through so that it would like re remove like the, the, the social and cultural bound boundaries that cause war when another, you know, type of culture tries to take over another one like China's doing right now. They're, they're growing and their middle class is growing and it was very interesting. Um, and, and, and I wish I could remember it, but whatever. So, um, but that kind of proves to the point that, you know, people need to do things to change things because if, you know, if you don't do that, then, then you're gonna be left behind. And it's only gonna get, you know, progressively um, faster and things are gonna happen quicker. And, and, you know, if someone didn't take a chance on me, I, I wouldn't be here right now because they knew that there was something about me that was different. You know, like I mentioned before, I, I have a pretty shady past, you know. Um, you know, I, with all, all the drugs I did, all my, all my, all my convictions were, were violent violence. Yeah, I was a fighter. I get messed up and I'd like to fight, you know. And, and that doesn't really look good on paper. <laughs> and, and even though it had been like 10 plus years prior, it's still, it is what it is. But, you know. I, I did bring stuff to the table. I had worked many different jobs, including sales and other things like that, so I could, you know, bring something to the, to the team that, that nobody else could do at the time. Um, and, and that's what they played on at first until I started to pick up Drupal and started to write code again and, and things like that, and, and it worked. Um, you know, and, and they did, and, and I've done this with other people I've hired, that, you know, uh, you have to set, you know, some, 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 like, minimum bar, like, that they have to hit, otherwise it's like, what's the point of doing this? And that's, that's the same for any job, um, but, you know, when you take a chance on somebody, you, you just can't let them take the ball and run with it because you'll, you'll end up hurting yourself. Um, and, and the thing that, you know, anybody that I've ever trained is, like, we would meet weekly, and one of the things they always used to hear me say is, how does that make you feel? You know, how did this make you feel? What's going on? You know, it's okay to cry in Drupal, um, uh, and things like that. And, and, you know, especially for me, I'm always self-conscious and I'm always obsessive. Like part of addiction is an uh, obsessive behavior. Um, and I'm always like, did I do this right? Or did I piss that person off? Or am I, am I okay? You know, I'm always thinking, I'm always comparing myself to somebody else. Um, so in return, when, I, when I'm, I'm training someone or if I'm managing someone, I, I make sure that regular feedback is a must because if you don't give that, they'll, they'll never know. I mean, it's pretty simple. <laughs> um, you know, because someone took a chance on me, we are a community. They don't call it the Drupal community for nothing. Um, you know, I've written, I've written many contrib modules. I mean, I'm doing like really crazy stuff with Drupal 8 now, like all this REST API integration and mixing stuff with OneHub and Blackbot and Slack. And I, you know, this past like couple months, I think I've written three modules alone. Um, and, and that would have never happened. You know, if someone didn't take a chance on me, the community wouldn't have those things. I mean, they could have eventually, but you know, the reality is that it, they're there because someone, you know, someone took a chance on me and I wrote the codes and there it is. And I, I've written some really complex, cool stuff. And I've, I've given non like touchy feely sessions at other, you know, camps and cons. I've spoken at DrupalCon once before about growing a support team. And I've, you know, um, done a lot of things. And, and one of the things that I'm most grateful for is, you know, I started a, a mentorship program at my predecessor. And you know, here, here's the three people that I train, uh, you know, Katie, Amy, June, and Daniel. And um, none of them had computer backgrounds. None of them were, um, you know, a CS major like I was. Um, you know, Katie was a, a recent college grad. Amy June was a nurse. And, and Daniel kind of was like a, a IT guy, ex-cop type of deal, you know? So, um, and, you know, 
they were just looking to get their foot in the door. And so I had I'd gone, um, I remember a few years ago, we, I had gone to one of the sessions at DrupalCon, I think it was in LA or something, and um, at ZivTech, they were given a, a presentation on, on their mentorship program. I was like, that's a good idea, you know? I want to do that. So I reached out to Jody, and I was like, hey, what's up? Tell me everything you know. You know, that's another part of the community, is we're, we're an open source community. We, we, it's okay to share knowledge. I mean, you don't have to like give every bit of information, but you know, she was more than grateful to sit down and, and talk with me and, and kind of like tell me you know, how ZivTech did their mentorship program, and I modeled our mentorship program after that, and it was successful. Um, you know, the one thing though, you know, like mentorship isn't for everybody. Um, you know, especially when you're training rookies is that they don't know anything. And, and especially with the, those three, they had no computer background really. Um, so teaching them from the fundamentals from scratch all the way to like complex like Drupal 8 stuff, it takes time and patience and, and things like that. So um, if you're not okay with answering 42 billion questions a day, then don't do it, don't be a mentor, <laughs> you know, because it's not gonna happen. Um, you know, as a, as a senior developer, it, it, it's my, it's my, one of my jobs is, is to make sure that, you know, people that don't have the experience that I have can learn from me. Because I asked up 42 billion questions when I first got into Drupal and I was able to, you know, pick it up and learn. So, um, you know, one of the things that killed me was, um, they're not gonna be profitable, they're not gonna be billable, they're not gonna make your company money. It's a reality, you're, you're investing in their future, all right? So if you, if you treat people like numbers on a spreadsheet, you know, then I have, I have choice words and I'm not gonna go into them for people who do that, but um, you know, it's just, it's, that's not the name of the game here. We're, we're creating future people of Drupal, we're, we're creating people that, that will give back to this community and, and eventually they'll be able to make your company a lot of money. And you know, the community, um, it, it's, it's not, uh, it seems okay now, like a year or two ago, I had questions if the Drupal community was gonna survive, especially after the release of Drupal 8 and the huge learning curve, and, and I saw people, like, you know, I'm on sales, and I, we, we do, you know, cold, cold source blasting to where I talk to people who use Drupal, and there's a lot of people leaving Drupal for WordPress and other things um, out there that had like Drupal 6, 7 sites that don't wanna pay the $100,000 to upgrade to Drupal 8, and, and it's like, crap, you know, it's my, my job security, in, you know, in question now, but it, it seems to be, you know, coming around, but still, um, you know, even myself, like, there was a lull in my contributions towards, like, right around when Drupal 8 came out, because, like, Drupal 7 kind of hit that maturity state, and I wasn't really active in the queues anymore, I wasn't doing anything, I wasn't making new modules, and then, like I said, recently, all of a sudden, it's like boom, 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 because it, it almost feels like we're starting over again with Drupal 8, the way that pretty much everything works, and, and there's a lot of things that aren't ported yet, and there's a lot of functionality missing. I, you know, I just finished a really complex Drupal 8 migration, and, and it took like 12 really custom modules to replace like a bunch of contrib modules that used to exist in Drupal 7. So um, it, it's different, you know, and, and we need people to, to you know, come in and help write the codes and, and get things along, and, it takes everybody, you know? We need as many people as we can to move this project forward. So, you know, kind of like how, you know, how can you take a chance on someone like me, you know? How does your company, you know, hire an ex-con or hire someone that doesn't have a CS degree or hire someone that, that just, you know, doesn't fit your typical mold of, of, of whatever you may be looking for? and. Everybody, everybody, you know, like I mentioned before, everybody has their own skill set, their own, um, you know, talents that they can bring to a team, because it is a team. Um, you know, nobody's just a solo practitioner, even though sometimes, you know, you'll be heads down writing code and you forget you exist, you know, but that's just, you know, the way it is. But, I mean, you know, when we look to hire, you know, bring those, those other people into the, to the other mentorship program, I, I just talked to them and had conversations and I could tell, you know, by asking them some like aim type questions, like that they had a logical mind, that they could figure this out and that, you know, um, they, they could take criticism and other things like that. And that was kind of like the deciding factors to like bring them into the mentorship program. So, you know, if you're looking to do that, then I suggest doing something like that. But if, you know, you're looking to hire someone to grow them, it, it's the same thing. Um, you know, when I, when I was, you know, like learning Drupal, there was a lot of, you know, monthly check-ins and 
quarterly one-on-ones and all this HR stuff and things. And, um, you know, to make sure that I was doing the right thing so that, like, their investment, their, their chance in me um, paid off. And it did. Um, and it went for the other people I trained. We, we had weekly meetings and, and monthly one-on-ones. And, you know, in our one-on-ones, it was just like, I didn't talk. I was like, tell me what's up. What's going on? What's wrong? How do you feel? You know? Um, and, you know, sometimes there were quick combos. Sometimes, like, I don't understand this. It's okay to say you don't know things. Because the only way you're going to learn is if you say that. So, um, you know, don't be afraid to fail. Uh, I had to fail 42 billion times before I got to the way I am now. Um, and, and, and failure is, is, an, is an acceptable thing. And it's a very hard concept to grasp, especially in our American society, to where success is such like a big, you know, key factor to everything. But it's okay, you know. So um, another thing, too, is, you know, like I mentioned earlier, don't let, like, people give the ball and let them run with it. I mean, you have to set expectations and, and check-ins and, and, and make sure that, like, that those people are doing okay. Because, I mean, they, I never had to experience it, but if someone didn't work out, then they don't work out. I mean, that's just the reality of life as well. Um, not everybody can do this, um, and that's okay. You know, maybe you could find something else they could do. Um, so, you know, kind of touched on like how you can kind of accept people in different backgrounds and, and kind of give them, you know, um, the strength and, you know, hope to, to, to you know, go forward and, and do great things. And, um, you, know, you know, when I got into NA, um, you know, NA kind of gave me the, 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 you know, the framework to address my addiction. And you gave me, by working the steps, I was able to develop a, a, um, a tool set to kind of handle all my issues that I may have. Um, Drupal gave me the financial security I needed to kind of alleviate um, any concerns around that. Because I, I mean, finances and other things like that were always a big deal to me. So when I would like lose a job because I was too messed up to do something, you know, um, yeah, I would go down this really deep rabbit hole. So kind of Drupal gave me the confidence and that final security, uh, you know, financial security back. Um, and because of that, you know, I've, I've, um, I've used my coding skills outside of Drupal. I've, I've, I've developed two Narcotics Anonymous area websites. I've, I've been on, like, I'm very big in service and services. Like, Narcotics Anonymous is structured almost like a government body. You have, like, different levels of service, and it's the group level, the area, region, world. It kind of goes up, and, and I've been involved in service, like, since I almost got clean. And I've, I've built a couple of websites. I've been uh, the regional conferences. I built their website. Um, I've talked to the World Board. We put out a distribution for WordPress, Drupal 6, 7, and 8, so that other fellowships can go ahead and spin out websites easily. Um, I've done a lot. I, I, I'm always a busy guy, you know. Um, you know, <laughs> my shirt, you know, my, the shirt with my face on it. And I, I'm <laughs> uh, this actually has to do with my son. Uh, it has nothing to do with me. And it's actually, I'm very socially awkward, so when I wear this to a party around here, and people, as they get drunker, they're like, oh, you know, your, your face is on your shirt. And I'm like, no, it's not, you know, and I walk away. But, um, <laughs> and so, um, but, you know, this was for my son, actually. My, my son is on the autism spectrum, um, and he was getting bullied at school. And so um, my gut reaction is just go beat the crap out of the kids, you know. <laughs> that's, that's how I deal with things. But um, I, I kind of took a step back, and I was like, well, you know, um, my son doesn't live with me, but I wanted him to feel like I was always with him. So I, I kind of commissioned this, this kind of Che Guevara type of looking shirt. And, and I was like, here, buddy, you know, when you're not feeling, you know, safe, just wear this. And, They'll let you know that this scary looking dude is your father as well. So, um, and, it, and he, I don't know if he wears it all the time, but he, I've seen him wear it and it was kind of a, but now it's just kind of, it kind of manifested itself from there. Everybody wants a John's shirt and I've made a whole bunch of them and whatever. So, um, but you know, because any kind of gave me the foundation and Drupal kind of gave me that, the confidence, I, I am a better father. I, there was a, there was a good time I didn't, my, my, my children's mothers wanted, wanted me nothing to do with my kids. Like, they, they kept me away. And, and now I'm very much a part of their lives. And um, this past year, I, I had, like, this really great moment 
with my son's grand, uh, grandparents on his mother's side. And these are people that I did horrible things to in active addiction. I mean, I stole from them. I treated their daughter like shit. I, I, did, I did really, really bad things, and I brought them through so much drama. And I was actually up north um, getting my record expunged. And, um, and they sat me down. They told me how proud they were of me. Like, and, and for me, that was like, you know, I try not to cry. I'm like, oh, yeah, thanks, you know, like, out the door. <laughs> but, uh, but it's just like, you know, it was a very good moment because these are people I hurt really, really bad, really bad. And, and they, they told me what, how proud they were of me. You know, um, I, I have all sorts of confidence. I mean, this past year was a big year for me. I switched jobs. I, I'm no longer a convicted felon. Um, the judge called me the model of re rehabilitation when he signed all the paperwork to have my record expunged, and I was like, man, I really fooled him, you know, but it, it, uh, it, was, it was a good feeling, you know. Um, I've come so far, you know, um, in this journey, in Drupal and in my recovery life. Um, it feels pretty good to be where I am. I, 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 was, I tried to, the other night um, I was watching, I saw there was the Jersey Shore uh, reunion show, whatever it was. I tried to watch it. I made it about 15 minutes in. I was like, man, I'm so glad there's no drama in my life anymore. And I kind of turned it off. I was like, I don't live that way anymore. And I couldn't even watch it, you know? Uh, I don't even know why I thought it was okay to watch, you know? But whatever. So, um, you know, and I've had some other big moments too. Um, I, I'm not anonymous in my professional life. I don't go to like every sales call and be like, hi, I'm John Maddock. I used to rob people for drugs, you know? But like, you know, it's, um, uh, anybody that does this, you know, you become friends with some of your clients. I mean, I've worked with some clients for years and, and there was a moment many years ago that um, a client, he sent me this really expensive bottle of whiskey for Christmas. It's a thank you. And I had not told anybody besides the people I worked with that, you know, that I was in recovery. And so it was, it was, it was like one of those moments where I was like, I need to say something. So, you know, I told them, you know, I've been clean at the time, I think like a year and a half. And um, I was like, I can't take this, you know, I'm sorry. And, and I gave it to somebody else, but I thanked them, you know. And, and a lot of the clients, you know, I, I started to talk about this, and, and there, there's a good number of the clients that I handle that know that I'm giving the speech right now, know that I am in recovery, and, and that same client that gave me that whiskey bottle came to me um, a little over two years ago, and he, um, you know, he texted me, and he was like, hey, I got a friend, and of course I thought it was him, because I've hung out with him, and he parties like a rock star, <laughs> and, 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 and I was like, yeah, okay, what's up? And we're talking, and he's like, I, I have a friend I grew up with. Can you talk to him? And I was like, well, does he want to change? You know, because so long, so many people try to get me clean by pushing me into rehabs and other things, and I didn't. I was like, yeah, whatever. I could, I could be a good, you know, soldier for a little while, but as soon as, like, you know, when nobody was looking, it was game on. But, and so I talked to him, and, and we talked. Uh, he did all the talking, and he was out in Lafayette, California, and I live in Florida. So, and we, we um, you know, we're talking on the phone and I could hear myself in him, you know, from many years before. He was, he was in the tech industry, he was lost. He was on the way of being homeless. He owed this pimp all this money. He was all strung out on drugs. It was like, it was me all over again. And then we talked and we talked and we talked every day um, for a few months until he got kind of clipped up with NA out there. And, 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 and he just sent me a text the other day. He picked up two years, you know? He's been clean for two years. So. You know, that's a great feeling when, when stuff like that happens because, um, because I'm not ashamed of who I am, you know, and I'm not going to, like, make any excuses for anything I did in the past. I did all that stuff, you know, but I, 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 I'm, I ma I'm making my amends as I go through life. And, and, and you know, if some of my family is listening and I haven't made any amends to you, don't worry, you'll get a, I'll get you, you sooner or later. But, um, you know, it's just... It's been a, a really good journey for me, and uh, I, um, you know, but the reason why I give this talk, it really isn't for me or the Drupal community, it's for the addict that still suffers. Um, there's a lot of people that come to these things and they don't know what to do, you know, they're scared. I remember being you, you know, not worrying that, you know, I can't stop using. I'd, all I want to do is get messed up, you know? And my bills are due, and they're taking the kids away, and I'm getting kicked out of my house, and I'm doing foxhole prayers, please God. You know, why can't I stop using? And, and, and you know, nobody was there for me. So if you're listening or, you, or you're watching this now, that's my phone number. 
You can text me. You don't even have to tell me your name, and I'll, I will talk to you and help you because nobody did that for me. So, you know, that's all I got. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? No questions? Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, Amy June. How does that make you feel? I feel relieved a little bit now. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of a calm, and this, this whole thing is always just kind of wing it. Um, so I, I just, you know, in your head, you're going to say all these things that you never do, but I feel kind of good now. And I'm glad it's happy hour, so I can go watch people drink and I have my face shirt on, and, you know, they can get drunk and fun stuff like that. But cool. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, it's all about chances. I mean, we, we have this one life, and, and, and I mean, people know what it's like to be judged by your past and other things you do, and it doesn't feel good, you know? I mean, people do grow up and they move on, and, 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 and you know, I was a man child for the first 36 years of my life, you know? I used to feel like a grown up for the first time, and, and, and you know, I caused a lot of wreckage, and I heard there's people I'll never speak to because what I did, no matter even if I make amends to them, and I'm, I'm okay with that. You know, I've made peace with stuff like that, and and you know, but I'm never gonna. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of. I have a lot of good friends in the program, like good, solid dudes, and and they're they're very successful, you know, in in their in their locations and things like that. But you know, they they, they can see who, me for who I really am, and, and they love me, and it's okay. I can say I love you back, and it's not weird or. Or, or strange for another guy to tell another guy that he loves him, you know? Because I do, because there's been times in my recovery that, like, I struggled. I, I had a really bad breakup with my ex <laughs> during recovery, and it was the first time after many years that I, like, I felt like using again. But I used, you know, the skills of NA to reach out and be like, I'm struggling bad, you know? And they were there, right there. They surrounded, and uh, I made it through, you know? And so I've kind of emulated that, even with the people I help train. I call them my Padawans, you know. We have a Slack channel, and I make sure that we have questions, and they'll ask me questions, you know. None of them work at, at the predecessor we all worked at. One of, two of them work for Hook 42, and another one would work for Go Overseas. And, and um, you know, they, um, they ask me questions, and, and I'm there for them. So I'll always kind of, you know, help them, because, you know, I saw something in them, and I still see something in them. So. That was kind of a long-winded response, but. <laughs> yes. Hey, man, uh, thanks for sharing your, your story. And um, if someone would sort of share, uh, I have a similar background, mm -hmm. um, not exact as your story, but similar. Um, I'm from Baltimore, um, and I used to do heroin and cocaine. Mm -hmm. I got clean in uh, 1999, mm -hmm. so been clean for like a long time. Very similar experiences, and I, I wanted to share that um, I I work for Johns Hopkins University um, Bloomberg School of Public Health, uh, which is right smack dab in the middle of the neighborhood where I used to cop drugs. Mm -hmm. And um, I started there in August, and we had this um, opioid symposium, and the, uh, Bill Clinton was there, and mm -hmm. Elijah Cummings, who is like a um, you know he's a House of Representative or something like all these like talking about the opioid epidemic and like I built like the sort of like the, the mini site that that mm -hmm. webcast was living on and all these people were watching and I was sitting upstairs mm -hmm. um, monitoring the webcast you know mm -hmm. and it was just like really surreal because like, I'm looking out the window and like right up the street I used to cop heroin mm -hmm. and here I am like you know 18 years later and uh, up and out It's just amazing, man. And the point really is, like, anybody can make it through, you know. And I've always been really open, just like you, like mm -hmm. about my my background and stuff, because like I've always found, just to sort of reinforce what you were 
saying that like it, I found opportunities to help other people, mm -hmm. you know, like throughout my journey. Um, I didn't get into tech until later. I spent eleven years as a graphic designer and mm -hmm. realized that wasn't really for me. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but um, yeah, man, I just wanted to sort of say like, yeah, me too, and it's like it's great. Thanks. Thanks. Any other questions? All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.